peace was shattered last week when this jailed teen, described being part of a planned holdup that had a deadly ending. The man we spoke with off camera has called Lee Crest Avenue just off West Rains Road home for several years. Mm -hmm. The man we spoke with said after seeing that heavy police presence, he knew instantly things were not going to turn out well. Sadly, he was right. In fact, he knew after seeing blue latex gloves, the kind first responders often wear, coupled with blue flashers, that this was a big deal. I got out of work and I seen blue lights everywhere and the ammo lamps and... And I knew it was some shooting because they said that some glass and stuff was shot out. But something he did not know is who would end up losing their life. Detectives say Cariani Brown admitted to orchestrating with her boyfriend the robbery of a drug dealer she knew through social media. Brown later described her 21-year-old boyfriend, identified as Jalen Faulkner, as pulling out his gun, but quicker on the trigger was someone inside the car with the drug dealer. Faulkner would be the one shot and killed. Yeah, and really a lot of drama that go on on this street, but every once in a while, you know, every blue moon. Drama filled and disturbing are ways of describing what happened as Brown admitted to leaving her dying boyfriend in the street after first removing the two guns he came with. Days later, Brown was caught, leaving those living nearby, praying that peace they're used to will soon return. In Southwest Memphis, Jarita Patterson, WREG, News Channel 3. See this female right here? See this female? Not much to look at. Um, and she's 18, if you can believe that, with this old hangdog looking face. Uh, she's responsible for uh, one death by multiple uh, gunshot wound and uh, she's going to be responsible for at least two men going to jail for a very very long time All right and the person that's uh, dead was her boyfriend a supposed boyfriend a criminal like herself and shit who was shot multiple times and then left to bleed out on the sidewalk and she ran away after relieving him of his weapons or not. You know, some people look at that and say, oh, she was trying to, uh, you know, she was trying to make sure he didn't get any further trouble and shit. But, you know, if you really love somebody, you wouldn't leave them dying on the sidewalk and shit. You wouldn't leave them dying there. She was thinking about herself. Yeah, she ran away. Imagine that you, you paid the ultimate price. You made the ultimate sacrifice. We all know this is black men. That this is what they require of us and shit. But imagine you made that ultimate sacrifice. Sacrifice, you caught some hell, you caught some hot fire in your ass and shit, some bullet wounds, and your significant other runs away and leaves you to die. His last, his last, you know, images, the last thing he would see would be her fugly ass running away and shit, okay? And she, I want to, you know, I want to reiterate, she's 18 years old. 18. Her name is Kiriani Brown, all right? Yeah, I don't know who named her. She, the shit is spelled uh, K-E-R-R-Y-O-N-I Brown. Carrioni. Who the fuck named this thing? Anyway, you know, both of them were um, doing some criminal activity and shit. They, uh, she hooked a guy on Facebook and shit with the intention that her and her, uh, the aforementioned now dead boyfriend would rob the person when they, uh, they met up. I don't know what the circumstances was. But the guy has been alleged to be a drug dealer. You know, and I wouldn't be surprised if he was actually a drug dealer. But, you know, I tend to err on the side of caution when uh, I don't try to demonize other black men and shit. We get enough of that crap on a daily basis, every day of the year, 365 days a year. We get fucked with all, every from every side, spiritually and mentally and shit as well. All right? So I... I just say they alleged he was a drug dealer. They planned to meet him, and they were going to rob him. And I have to, I am of the belief they were going to rob and murder him and possibly take his, his car as well. Why not? That's what I am thinking and shit, okay? That's my, my theory, okay? All right, however, when he pulled up to the meat spot, you know, it's a neighborhood that wasn't hers, obviously. Her and her boyfriend were lying in wait. When, they, when he pulled up, the boyfriend and I supposedly took the lead, drawing up his weapon, 
and from the car, not the guy that they were meeting, there was another gentleman in the car with him who fired and, and ended the, the criminal-minded Pookie, all right, who died on the sidewalk and watched her run away with his weapons. He had two guns on him. And uh, he uh, he died out on the street, and then they drove they drove off. You know, I I have to be honest. I don't want the guys in the car to get any charges whatsoever. I don't want them to get any charges whatsoever, man. Street justice and shit. But it's not complete because uh, you know, ugh, she's only charged with reckless homicide, aggravated robbery, and tampering with or fabricating evidence. And she's already delivered a statement regarding the guy she met online and that he was a drug dealer. She's cutting his deal. All right. She's being held on $85,000 bond and scheduled to appear on, in court on Tuesday. You know, and today is the, today is the 6th of January. It's pretty fucked up. There's no uh, manslaughter or murder charge there. And I, you know, I'm pissed off. I, I wanted to just tell you a shit. Uh, I hate, one of the things I hate about black women and shit, I want to be honest about this, one of the things I hate about, well, you know, just in general, the other gender, is the use of proxy violence, okay? That's when you use someone else to harm another person, alright? That's what, that shit reigns supreme in our, in our burg down here in the slave quarters and shit, okay? A lot of women do this shit. A lot of women do this shit. I'm going to call my man. I'm going to call my daddy. And to me, honestly, I'm talking to you young kings out there. When you hear a woman saying that, that should be telling them tantamount to her drawing a weapon, a loaded weapon uh, on you with the safety off. When you hear a woman saying some shit like that, that should be tantamount to her drawing a weapon on you with the safety off and whatnot. Because we know that the two dummies involved are, are gonna, uh, you know, they're gonna catch hot fire and shit. All right, they're the ones that's gonna pay the ultimate price. While she's just gonna skate away, she's just gonna recycle, rinse and repeat the, the vicious cycle and shit. We need to break that. You know, logically speaking, you know, if we have any political power, you could push for proxy violence to become, to become, uh, you know, a, a crime punishable. Even on the federal level and shit. They're not gonna do that, okay? Because we're we're black, all right? And this shit reigns supreme in our community. If you even think somebody's capable of doing some shit, if they mention anything like that, and I, I gotta tell you, in my life I've been threatened numerous times with proxy violence. I've experienced proxy violence numerous times and shit to varying degrees. And I, I can honestly tell you, I've I engaged in uh, one or two instances of proxy violence myself, and I, I literally, in, in the, on the West Coast, I literally beat a guy from one end of the block to the other in a bout of proxy violence and shit, but he exacerbated it. I was going to walk away, but he, he he exacerbated it, and he ended up getting his ass whooped for a whole city block and back again. And we were cool after that, you know, if you can believe that, you know? We were cool. <laughs> Bros before hoes. Now, I don't know what to tell these niggas out here on the streets. Now, I don't know what to tell you young dudes, man. You better protect yourself, okay? You better, like I say, keep your head on a fucking swivel. Don't trust nobody, especially none of these females and shit. You can't trust them. All right, if you live in the hood or something, even anywhere your fucking ass live and shit, anything can go sideways and shit. Make sure you have discernment. Make sure you are. Uh, you're, you know, you don't got to tell her, but make sure you give her a little shit test and shit every now and then. You know, keep on the swivel. Keep her at arm's length and shit. You can never tell what could happen and shit. A lot of times women are doing this shit using their family members, putting their family members' lives in danger and shit. I, I saw a story a couple of months ago where some woman was doing that and the boyfriend or the baby daddy uh, literally shot her two, uh, shot her brothers and killed them and she was okay. And she didn't get any charges. She just had to give a statement to the police and shit. She got to go on with her life. And I think that was a travesty of justice and whatnot. And I hate how we rug sweep what women do. Like the shitty things they do. And that's one of the top ones. That proxy violence shit. You know, I put that right up there uh, with, uh, you know, 
fraternity issues and shit, you know, and other things, you know, uh, domestic intimate partner violence. Those are the three prongs of the trident that sticks in a brother's back and shit in this goddamn, you know, colonies, you know, in the slave quarters down here. Those are the three, you know, number one shits that, that stick in your back and shit, you know, why you should never, you know, you should keep, keep your uh, discernment high and shit. Keep your head on the fucking swivel. Don't make a Faustian deal. And number one else, number one, protect your seed. Protect your seed. That's the only way they can get you into the system. All right? Carry on, Brown. I hope she gets what she gets. So shit. I hope karma is swift and vicious and cold. Okay? I hope it is. Uh, she's only 18. She's a shorty. Okay? She ain't even a full-grown woman and shit. Okay, but she's a criminal. She's a criminal monster, and she's gonna get away with it and shit. And some other idiot is gonna feel that that hot fire in his ass before she's uh, she eventually hits the wall and her options are limited. Okay, she described the guy as a boyfriend. She's 18. Her boyfriend was 21. He was a thug and a pookie and shit. I have no sympathy for him, but I do think it was shitty that he was left to die alone on a sidewalk in winter in January in Memphis. While she ran away, he watched her ass that she ran away and left him to die and shit. After he had been shot for stupidly, you know, being in her presence, you know, being under influence and shit to, you know, do a criminal activity and shit. A possible murder and carjacking. Alright? She's already uh, thrown him under the bus post-mortem. She said that he used her Facebook account to set up the the hit. That's total bullshit. It's total bullshit. Keep your head on the swivel, Kings, okay? Stay stay safe.